Okay, we have here today a pretty tricky integral. We've got one from the MIT Integration B 2014. This is problem 18. We have the integral from zero to one of one over the floor function of one minus log base two, one minus x dx. Okay, so to get started with this, whenever we're dealing with the floor, that's usually what we want to take care of first. We don't really have a way to just go ahead and integrate without trying to simplify this. And what I usually try to do with the floor function is I usually want to break up the integral. I usually break up the integral on integer bounds. Now the trouble we have here is just notice our bounds are just zero to one. So there's no way to break this up just on integers this way. But actually there still is a way to break this up because what I can do is analyze what's inside here and try to figure out when is this gonna be an integer. Now of course one is an integer. So really what we wanna know is when is this log base two, one minus x gonna be an integer. Now you could try to graph it and get some insight that way. But one thing to notice here, because our bounds are between zero and one, this one minus x, that's also always going to be between zero and one, just plugging in values here. And in between zero and one, the log function is always negative. So the way I actually did this was by creating a table and analyzing this, just this piece here, log base two of one minus x, and looking at the negative integer values. So here we have our table, just analyzing a few negative integer values. Of course, we could keep going with this, but I just need to get a few to get a sense of what's going on. So for each of these values, we're setting it equal to this. We have like a little equation to solve. So like, just to be clear about it, for log base two, one minus x, when's that gonna be equal to minus one? Well, using property of logs, we can rewrite this as one minus x equals two to the negative one, or one half, and therefore x equals one half. So filling this into our table, our one minus x value here is gonna be just one half, and then our x value is one half. And so what I'm saying with this is we'll use this value, this x value of one half to break up our integral on, just because we know that log base two of one minus x is gonna be minus one at that value. Plugging minus one back in here, we're gonna have two in the denominator. So that's gonna be a nice integer point that we can use to break up our integral. So just continuing on with this, doing the same thing, like we can take two to the minus two, and we're gonna see that one minus x here needs to be one fourth. And then, and then if this is one fourth, then our x value is just three fourths. And then here, if this thing is minus three, we take two to the minus three, and we get one eighth for our one minus x value, which means that our x value needs to be seven over eight. Doing this just one more time, two to the minus four is gonna give me one over 16 here, which means our x value needs to be 15 over 16. So like I mentioned, these x values are just gonna keep going on forever, just getting closer and closer to our upper bound one, but never quite reaching it. So then we'll just go ahead and we'll use this to break up our integral, so let's make some space. So for my first integral, we'll start at zero here. So our lower bound's gonna be zero and we'll break it on one half. And again, when we reach this minus one point, we get two in the denominator here. But before that, this is gonna be still at zero. So what's gonna happen is we're just gonna have this one here and this piece is gonna be one dx. And then for our next integral, we're gonna start it at this one half point and we'll go to three fourths, this value we found right here. But then in this region between one half and three fourths, we'll use this minus one value. We plug it in here, we get a two. So this is gonna be one over two or one half dx here. Then continuing on doing the same kind of thing for the next one, we'll go from, well, three fourths is our lower bound and then we'll go to seven eighths, this value right here. But then for seven eighths, the floor is gonna round us down. We'll use this value minus two. You plug that in, you get one plus two or three. So we're gonna have one over three dx for this one. And then we'll do one last value here. We're gonna do seven eighths to 15 over 16. And then here it's gonna round us down to this minus three value. You plug that in here and you're just gonna have one fourth dx. But again, we're gonna have an infinite number of integrals here with smaller and smaller intervals getting closer and closer to one. But now we can just go ahead and integrate, but just notice we just have constant values. So we're really just integrating one. We can bring these, we can bring everything out front of the integrals. So when we do this, we'll have the constant up front and then we're just evaluating the difference between the bounds. So this will be like one half minus zero here. Here we'll bring a one half in front. This will become three fourths minus a half. And this will just continue on and on like this forever. But now let me just rewrite this so that we can see the pattern. So for this one, I'll write this as one over one. And then here I'll write this one half, I'll write it as one over two to the one like that. And then here we'll have one half. We can look at this as three fourths minus two fourths. This is this here is actually just gonna this here is gonna be actually just one over four. So let's write this as one over two squared. And then here, one third, this here becomes one eighth, but I can write that as one over two cubed. 
This here will be 1 fourth, and then we can write this as 1 over 2 to the fourth. And so I think you're seeing the pattern here. What I can do is write this in a summation. We can write this as, I can write this as n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. Noticing this, notice this is just 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is our 1 over n term here. And then this over here I can write as 1 over 2 to the n. Then just a little rearranging, let's express this a different way. I'm going to write this. Let's write it as n equals 1 to infinity, but let's bring the 1 half like into the numerator. So I can write it as 1 half to the n all over n. Okay, so now at this point we've established that our integral is going to have this value of this series here. We just need to figure out, but we want to actually try to get a numeric value for this. But what I want to do with this is actually notice the similarity to another series. I can write this as f of x, and we have this series have the same bounds n equals 1 to infinity, but I can write this as x to the n over n. So this right here, this is actually going to be our f of x, but it's going to be with the half input. So this is actually going to be f one half. And so then just to be clear about what this thing is, this is going to be just x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 dot dot dot. But, but the nice thing about this is it's perfectly set up to take a derivative. So when we look at our f prime of x, if we just like differentiate each of these, we get 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, etc. But the nice thing about that is this thing right here is actually just a geometric series with our ratio being x between each term. So I can actually write this as 1 over 1 minus x. For this to converge, of course, we need the absolute value of x to be less than 1. But that's no problem. Just noticing our bounds go from 0 to 1. So the absolute value of x is definitely going to be always less than 1. So this is okay here. But then what that allows me to do, if we know that f prime of x is equal to 1 over 1 minus x, Real quickly, we can just integrate this, but we know how to integrate this. This is actually just gonna be natural log, one minus x, but we need to take a minus up front for the minus on this term, so we'll bring it as minus natural log one minus x, and we'll put a plus c on it. And so because we integrated this derivative here, we're saying this here, this is gonna be actually f of x. Now, the only trouble is I don't really want this c here. So we don't really want that because when we get our solution, we have a definite integral and we don't want to have a plus C in it. We need to get that out of there and find a numeric value. So we need to find out what this plus C is. What I can do is evaluate this at zero. So for F of zero, I can just plug a zero into this. We'll have minus natural log one minus zero plus C. But we know what F of zero is because if we come back to this, look at our definition. We just have this X plus X squared plus X cubed. If you input a zero in here, this whole thing is zero, so f of zero must be zero. Solving this, we have minus ln of one plus c equals zero. Well, ln one is zero, so that goes away, and we're just left with c equals zero. But if c is zero, we can just kind of remove it from this definition right here, and we have our value for f of x. So now I think the real challenge in this whole problem is just remembering what we're doing after all that, because our goal, again, we just need to find f of one half. Well, now it's easy because we have our f of x, we just need to plug in. So evaluating f of x at 1 half, we're going to have our f of 1 half. This is going to become minus ln 1 minus 1 half. Simplifying this, we're going to have just minus ln 1 half. We could leave it, but let's take the minus into the exponent and take the reciprocal. And so for my final solution, we just get natural log of 2. Okay, there you have it. That was quite a bit. I haven't done anything with series in a while, so I thought it was pretty interesting. Challenging problem today from MIT 2014. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.